Sir Francis Bacon argued this innovative scientific method in his book, Advancement of Learning. Renaissance scientists literally changed the way the human race viewed the universe. It wasn't until Polish astronomer Nicolaus Copernicus came along that Western civilization accepted the fact that the Sun was the center of the cosmos and not the Earth. Copernicus also observed that the Earth spun around on its own axis every 24 hours. He compiled his theories in his book, Six Books Concerning the Revolutions of the Heavenly Orbs, published the year of his death. Tycho Bray added to Copernicus's work by measuring the positions of the stars and planets more accurately than anyone before him. And in Germany, Johannes Kepler concluded that the planets did not revolve around the Sun in circles, but in ellipses. Kepler gave us the first working model of our solar system. The Italian philosopher, astronomer and mathematician Galileo Galilei was among the first scientists to study the heavens using a telescope. With this new invention, he attacked problems of motion and astronomy. He also showed that there were mountains on the moon and satellites orbiting Jupiter. Galileo's observations confirmed Copernicus's theories about the Sun being the center of the universe. And for this, he was branded a heretic by the church. He was brought before an inquisition and forced to reject all his discoveries or else be put to death. He spent his last years under house arrest. The Roman Catholic Church had one institution, the Inquisition, which in um, Anglo-American scholarship has always been painted in very, very dark terms as intolerant and extremely cruel. What recent scholarship has uncovered is that the Inquisition run in places like Spain, Rome, other places in Italy, was no more intolerant or cruel than similar institutions set up by Protestant churches, places like Geneva, for instance. Long after Bray, Kepler, and Galileo died, scientists were still struggling with questions about motion. If the Earth spins on its axis, why don't we fall off the Earth? What makes it possible for the Earth to remain suspended in space? And how does the Earth move around the Sun? It wasn't until Isaac Newton discovered the laws of gravity and motion that these questions were finally answered. In 1687, he published his findings in his Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. Newton was a mathematical genius. He was also very religious. He believed that the forces of the universe did not operate without God's help. The Renaissance also saw advancements in medicine. People slowly began to turn from superstition and magic for cures and look for alternative treatments. The plague comes to Europe, but it does not immediately leave. It stays in Europe and becomes an endemic through, in Italy at least, the early 17th century. So if the plague disrupts a district, it will return again and disrupt that same district a decade later or a half generation later. So to live and work in Renaissance world was to know that there was always the possibility of calamity. Around 1590 the microscope was invented. This invention helped establish for the first time the connections between germs, hygiene and diseases. Philippus von Honeheim, known as Parcellus, was a German-Swiss physician whose work proved the link between chemistry and medicine. One of his findings came in 1530 when he discovered that mercury compounds are an effective antidote for syphilis. Probably the biggest contribution to Renaissance medicine was the work done by Andreas Vesalius on the study of the human anatomy. He was the first to dissect cadavers as opposed to animals, which was the accepted practice of the time. His major work, The Seven Books on the Structure of the Human Body, was published in 1543. Other inventions and developments of the Renaissance that we take for granted today are the mechanical clock, the compass, the microscope, even the calculator, which was preceded by the abacus.
It's hard to imagine living the lifestyle we enjoy today without the Renaissance. It was a period that stirred the imagination of geniuses and the ambitions of modern man by looking back to ancient times for ways of making the future better. The next time you log onto the internet or simply check the time or read a book, remember that it all started in an age we call the Renaissance.